Binary Jazz. I'm Gary, here with a uh, co-host and uh, pal of mine, shipping efficiency consultant, Allison Tarr. And to my other side, assuming I'm centered, small appliance performance engineer, Chris. Happy to see you folks again. Good morning. Good morning. Slash afternoon, depending on where you are. Or when you're listening. Good evening. We don't live. We don't live stream this, do we? Is that like the one thing we don't do yet? That's the one thing we don't do. I'm okay with that. So yeah, I'm okay. Everything with else that. we do. Yeah, yeah. The live text transcription on IRC check. Live <laughs> streaming, no. We need to have a you know a 10 to 15 second lag for security reasons, in case we let out any top secret information. <laughs> I think that's why the CIA is stationed right outside all of our doors. I did Maybe join your door. Life. Speak for yourself, Gary. <laughs> Do you not get that treatment? No. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> I'm off grid. I don't know about you. <laughs> it's true. Allison is is broadcasting from a small cabin in western Kansas. Secure bunker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Self sustaining. Broadcasting from his standard bunker. <laughs> yes. Marginally secure. <laughs> secure enough. Okay. Um, the format is changing today. Is the is the news? Um, the we normal didn't format. hear about this until today, so we have no idea even what to expect. Super apropos for this uh, this excursion. Um, the normal format: Allison brings a topic and we discuss it. Um, today's format is no topic. No topic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I, believe, to be fair. I, believe that you'll, I believe that you'll both be familiar with what this is. I think you'll just have different uh, opinions on the question about it. So you don't have to know what it is so much as what you think it constitutes. Okay. How about I've been that? dying for a fight with Chris. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we don't have nearly a, enough tension on this show. No, that's no true. Awkwardness, no tension. Uh, so all of our listeners have been saying that. All of our listener. <laughs> all the listener. Well, all the listeners. <laughs> we have good opinions, the listener. The listener being me. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the question is, what makes a salad a salad? Oh. <laughs> wow. What constitutes a salad? Whoa. That is big game for just having one cup of coffee this morning. Yikes. <laughs> this is contentious. Well, let's just define salads as they are colloquially, colloquially <laughs> not referred to that way. Um, there are fruit salads. There are potato salads. There are, um, like, just salad generally contains uh, not just vegetables. No. A leafy, a leafy green of some sort. Not necessarily. And other things. Not necessarily. Um, I'm trying to think of what are the salads I can think of. There's pasta salad. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of leafy greens in that. Um, I would say that a salad is defined as something that is, well, I don't know what makes it a salad, but a unifying uh, uh, quality of all salads is that they are generally <clears throat> served cold. A warm salad would be weird. Well, warm wilted spinach salads, salad, salads with a T, apparently doesn't apply in this case. Exactly, it's salads. a totally different thing. That's yeah. Different. Well, for, forgive my confusion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, let's establish our expertise in salads here. How often do you eat salads, Chris? Uh, I would say some. <laughs> some. I don't eat salads daily. Uh, I don't even eat salads weekly although my partner Erin does eat salads for lunch that is her lunch but it is a generally leafy green based salad um, yeah but i do have a long history of salad eating as a 
Yes. <laughs> of a variety of types. I come from a long line of proud salad eaters. <laughs> um, yeah, we have salad probably at dinner, I don't know, once or twice a week, like the traditional Americana salad. Like here's some iceberg lettuce and <laughs> radishes because you never eat radishes except in salad. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true. Especially as a child. Uh, carrots. Um, and then we dress it with, I don't know, you know, <laughs> something. I, I mean, if I read the ingredients, I would be a little disappointed in what I was dressing it with. Um, and maybe if it's a special occasion, might bring out the croutons to throw on top. Yep. So I'm looking forward to, to dinner at your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, um, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't define salad as just that because we have a um, recipe for uh, a chickpea salad, which is sort of like a chicken salad, um, Mm -hmm. like that style, but with chickpeas instead of chicken. Um, And that is obviously like a thing that is cold. That is possibly something that you put on a sandwich. Um, So that is a salad. And yeah, potato salads are... Salad. I think the result of this is not going to be a contentious conversation. It's going to be me getting hungry. Getting really hungry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that sounds fantastic. But you can have warm salad. salad. There's warm potato salad. That's weird. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not. It's good. It's got some nice uh, <laughs> nice elements going on. Um, I feel like uh, fruit salad is like the next de facto salad. Do you not? Maybe that's a Florida thing. Ah, it could be. I mean, I feel like if... What makes a fruit... Like, is fruit salad chopped fruit in a bowl? Yeah, and if you're really fancy, you cut a watermelon in half and use that as the bowl. And if you're super fancy, you don't cut the watermelon perfectly in half. You cut it, like, serrated. The, and yeah. Not serrated. It's. I mean, it's not like you're using the watermelon to slice fruit, but a decorative pattern Jeez, on the yeah, watermelon does. edge. Um, the salad and, you know, does it need dressing? No. No, absolutely not. No, because a fruit salad has no dressing. I mean, fruit by itself is the dressing. Oh, I love fruit salad. Goodness sakes, I'm going to eat so much after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to like r- rummage the fridge. Like, what are you doing? Making a salad. <laughs> you can't put tortillas in a salad. Watch it comes me. Out in the bowl like this. <laughs> taco salad. Yeah. Oh, a taco have, salad. Oh. Yeah, that's a salad I forgot about. Yeah. Yeah, and then typically some warm ingredients. That's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> wow. What makes a salad a salad? So it, it has to be something about the nature of how you eat it, right? Like it's forkable and bite size. That's true. Forkable. <laughs> well, as opposed to like spoonable. What's the, like, what's the difference between pasta salad and pasta? But I mean like, yeah, pasta salad you can spoon. And potato salad. You I can mean, you spoon. can spoon most things that you can fork. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> this is going down a really strange road. <laughs> like anything you eat fits on a utensil. I don't. I don't. This is not a. This is a non-contender. <laughs> <laughs> Porkable is not a thing. <laughs> um. Well, does it have to do with the way it's served as far as like, like portion, portionability? Like, yes. That I can splot. fit it on a utensil. Right. <laughs> splot. If, it, yeah. if it's a splot on your plate, then it is a salad. That, it, that can't be because a wedge salad, like you have to do the work yourself, you know? You have to do the work yourself. <laughs> wedge salads are great in theory and they taste good. But if you have to bring me out like a steak knife to cut my salad... I also feel like it's the way restaurants get rid of like old half heads of iceberg. What were they doing with the whole head of iceberg when they had it, if not for making salads? Well, obviously they were making salads or, or pieces of lettuce to throw on hamburgers. That's probably it. Um, but, but I mean, it's like, oh, this lettuce is getting a little long in the tooth. Like we can cut it into sixths and sell it for $8 and throw some blue cheese and uh, bacon on it say it's a wedge salad and make what is a wedge salad this is a, this is a thing that i'm unfamiliar with really yeah 
Oh, I should have. So which salad is? Salad. <laughs> Man, so I feel like I feel like we need like salad show and tell at some point in this <laughs> series. Um, a wedge. Yes. <laughs> and here we have the wedge salad. So wedge salad is, is typically like, I want to say it's supposed to be like a quarter of a head iceberg, maybe a sixth. I don't know. It's No, it can't be a quarter. That'd be pretty big. And then it has some blue cheese crumbles and probably some blue cheese dressing and probably some bacon thrown on it. And that's pretty much a wedge salad. That's, that's it. It's just a wedge of lettuce. Yeah, and it comes with a knife, so you can cut it into pieces. And it, I mean, it kind of works out pretty well. I like the blue cheese a lot on it. I think it's really an excuse for like a, a, a vehicle for dre like a, a dressing of some sort. And it's yeah. like kind of the portobello mushroom of salads for vegetarians. So they're like, oh, but if you have a knife and fork, this makes you feel like you have an actual thing that you're doing while everyone else is eating with their knife and fork. But I feel like every time I Thank see a wedge salad- Thank you for vegetarian translation, Allison. That makes a lot more <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> I feel like if you see wedge salad, though, it has like the has bacon on it, which I feel like if it really was, like, hey, here's here's something for vegetarians that feels fancy, which is such a stupid cop out for restaurants to do anyway. Um, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> no, no, I, I we're on the same side here. Like I I doing so we uh, sidebar. We I do this restaurant site with a, with a, uh, my brother in law, and we do um, like uh, food food events, and um, one of our biggest series is um, vegan events. So we do we'll go to a restaurant that that may or may not have um, vegan items on the menu, but to do like a full six course vegan menu. And a lot of times we can turn that in, leverage that into like, hey, 60 people showed up at your restaurant. And sometimes it's like, you know, 100 plus people over two nights um, that ate nothing but vegan food. Like maybe you could expand like your vegan and vegetarian offerings beyond a wedge salad people have to ask you to hold the bacon on. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. And, and it's been it's been super successful at, a, at a, quite a few restaurants, even even to, even even like in limited in like, well, Thursdays we'll offer like a fully vegan menu um, and maybe by request the rest of the week. But I mean, it like, it, it kind of sucks if you're going out to family events and like your diet restrictions mean that you go to like, you know, whatever like the standard family restaurant is. It's like, hmm, I can eat like nothing here but a salad. Like that's, that's crap. I'm opposed to that heavily. I, uh, so I'm working on some presentations for uh, uh, Open West in the summer. And I cut out a whole section where I went on a rant about food. Um, I was talking about being, the, the topic is being a better ally. And so food didn't really fit into that. Um, I was trying to illustrate how um, the thing, because I was talking about AlterConf and I was trying to illustrate how AlterConf was really thoughtful and how they organized the event and food was part of that. But yeah, so I have a whole, I have a whole rant about um, how going to events like tech conferences and whatever um is as a as a gluten-free vegan is like torture um and uh also torture uh like the bane of my existence is potlucks mm. because potlucks so so potlucks is a thing where the theory is everybody eats a little bit of everyone else's food but to right. me a potluck is we need to bring food that we can eat Otherwise, there will be no food that we can eat. <laughs> yes. There's no, there's no getting away with, with bringing a bag of chips. Like, that doesn't work unless we've eaten beforehand and are bringing the bag of chips as, like, here, here's a bag of chips because I didn't want to make something, but I already ate five minutes ago, so, you know, I'm cool. Do and you like feel... having kids, having kids, like, we go to a lot of potluck, so this is, like, a recurring theme, and, yeah. Do you feel compelled to take a plate of food like with a small serving of stuff you're not going to eat just so you're not no. antisocial? And then no. you just, yeah, I wouldn't expect you to. I, I would have that. I would, that would be me though. I would take a plate of food. Wait, you, bring would hold, you would hold a plate of food that you, you had no plan on eating. Just, <laughs> just because. I would to avoid, to avoid, no, to avoid the conversation. Like, Oh, you're not eating. Like, no, none of this crap is edible to me. Like, that's where no, we're I, 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 I'd be angry I, about it. If, if it was one of those things where the only thing I brought was a bag of chips yeah. and there was no other food for me to eat, I would stand there with chips on a plate and be munching them in front of people to sort of emphasize how little food there is for me to eat. <laughs> Crunching very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressively. So on the, um, 
I'm the food coordinator for WordCamp Jax, um, and which I love. So last year we had a uh, we had a taco day, obviously. We had a taco <laughs> bar. Shocked. <laughs> yeah, no one was surprised about that. Um, but I um, I worked with a local chef um, that I've done a few vegan events with to do our um, our vegan gluten free options, um, and then I acted as bouncer for the vegan table. Nice. <laughs> I've had several shout outs on Twitter as hey, that's the vegan bouncer guy. <laughs> <laughs> this year I'm excited because the chef I'm working with um, she was born in Uganda, grew up in London like kind of came up as a chef in I think San Diego and now runs a like a uh, food truck Indian um, yeah an Indian food truck here in town and so she is doing our uh, our vegan option for lunch we only have lunch one day this year we usually use the same uh, the same caterer the same chef uh, for Word Camp Salt Lake City that we've used for the last several years um, who runs a bunch of vegan restaurants in town, but I've always wanted to, there's a, there's a, uh, a food, a restaurant incubator called the spice kitchen, which specifically uh, is there to help uh, refugees from other countries get businesses established as food with food trucks or, or restaurants or other, you know, food industry things. So like basically you, you join this incubator and you have access to a full kitchen and they do a thing every week where, you know, you can put in your order online earlier in the week and go pick it up uh, that night. So I like it's today's uh, spice kitchen day. So I'm getting like uh, Iraqi and or Iraqi slash, uh, I don't remember if it was, yeah, I don't remember. What, what, it, it's like the person is is uh, descended from from two, but I know Iraqi is part of it. Maybe Palestine. Um, anyway, so so like you know, food from other food from places that I would never even have like had any exposure to at all, um, which is amazing. Uh, and it supports refugees, which is also amazing. And I've, and they do catering. Uh, and so I've always wanted. I've always had the thought of of like maybe we should have Spice Kitchen to cater our event. Um, just because it would be really cool to have like refugee, like, you know, ethnic foods at a, at a word camp. I think it might be a little bit too adventurous for the word camp crowd though. Like <laughs> we, you're totally right. We had barbecued jackfruit, um, as one of the vegan options. Um, I'm trying to, what else? I mean, there was, there was, yeah, it was a stretch and the, the feedback on my vegetarian vegan option was not great. And I didn't care. Um, so we have we have because, jackfruit we have because we do we do a, a local barbecue place and then so and that does pulled pork and all sorts of stuff um and so when we told our caterer that's what the other the meat option is he pre he prepares a a bunch of food that is similar to what's being given to the meat eaters so he does like barbecue jackfruit in the style of like pulled pork and he does like a seitan thing that's like you know meat stuff that i don't use yeah. it's wheat um so i don't really know <laughs> um allegedly it's good yes allegedly um i can vouch i can vouch that it was delicious <laughs> yeah yeah there you go um so so yeah the, the jackfruit is actually like a thing that we we do and, and jackfruit I, I find that jackfruit is is pretty good like the day of um but it doesn't make <laughs> It doesn't make the best leftovers, especially when you have like a huge like gallon bag of it that you took home because nobody else wanted it. Oh no! <laughs> it's 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 just it, it gets progressively less worse or less less good as the days go by. I'm sorry, I didn't even have jackfruit. <laughs> Please add more jackfruit. That's that's what I'm really saying, Allison. Is you should have had more jackfruit. I'm sorry, I ate as much as I could. <laughs> I, I'm so glad this conversation is entirely about food. <laughs> it's supposed to be about salads, but. <laughs> Jackfruit salad. Yeah. I don't, I, I really, I, I can't, I, I can't come up with a thing that makes sense that would consistently be used to define salad as salad. I don't. Well, here's one that's. <laughs> I don't know what only, the connecting thing is. You can help answer this for me. Um, Cause it's been one I've struggled with with Rhonda for many years. Is chili a soup? No. 
<laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, what, what chili are you eating? I, love, I just I just wanted to let that indignant know. <laughs> it actually echoed. Did you hear it like reverberate? <laughs> no. Um, um but what seriously, what chili it, are you eating? I was thinking like in the hierarchy of foods, like chili <laughs> is not if anything, it's a stew, but I don't even, I mean, if it's done well. a stew well, is a subcategory of soups. Sort of. Soup is something yeah. like, soup is, 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 is like something that you drink and you don't drink chili. Are you proposing that soup should be a subcategory of stew? No. So that, like soup I do, think, I do think that stew is related to soup, but I think they're like, they're cousins. They're not like descendants. It's not like stew no, is the child. No, they absolutely are in the same part of the family tree. They are yeah. 100% on the same part of the family tree. I, I really want this. We need to diagram this. <laughs> I, I, I need to need... visualize immediately, pretty much. Yeah. I'm going to need some pipe cleaners and um, some sticky notes this afternoon. Well, if, if it's not a soup, then what, what's the proposed category it is? Is it just a meal? Just a, an entree? I don't know. I, this, basically, all of our, all the food or m the majority of the food that we eat are like single bowl meals, like all of the things in a bowl and you eat it. That's so chili or like dal or like... I don't know, whatever, it goes in a bowl and you eat it. It's food. <laughs> There's nothing, and like, I don't know, like, like, so dal is an Indian dish and we eat that and you put it over rice. And like, is that a soup? Is that a stew? No, it's dal. It's what it is. Like, it's the thing that it is. It's, it's lentils that but are like kind of mashed, not even really mashed, but like they kind of congeal into a, a saucy thing. Like, is, is Indian food stews? No, it's, it's, stuff you put on rice it's not food it's not stew it's not soup it's a thing Gary, you, look, you look sad <laughs> it's i not believe sad. that it all falls under the subcategory of something though i believe it's sure, parallel food to stew. food no there's a there's a there's a between food and stew <laughs> and dal and soup is a is a a taxonomy to whereby we can group these things bowlable bowlable spoonable <laughs> Or maybe not spoonable because stew is bowlable. <laughs> these things, these things are related. Everything, there is a strong correlation. Everything is bowlable if you put it in a bowl. <laughs> well, just like salads are spoonable if you do with a spoon. But 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 conversely, like you could, there's a consistency level of soup. You couldn't put it on a plate. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> Depends on your soup <laughs> and your plate, I guess too. I've seen some very deep plates. Um, so do salads, back to salads, because I'm thinking about salads now. Is there, is there a, a minimum number of ingredients, like different ingredients to make a salad? Like there's not, typically in salad, there's not like a lot of preparation. Like the ingredients are generally pretty, pretty unchanged, like individually on their own, they're pretty simple, simplistic, right? Yeah, I guess. Is that fair? I, I, I well, I don't know. I can There's salad can be complicated. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to throw people under the bus if they find making salad a complicated process. Well, that was my. I don't mean that salads can't be complicated. I mean that that you can break the ingredients down into a handful of discrete. In, let's say this. I'm just gonna throw something against the wall and see what sticks. A salad consists of four to eight ish ingredients that in and of themselves do not take large amounts of prep time. Four to eight? I, that's arbitrary. I don't like what it about totally is arbitrary. Salad? Well, but what about what about potato salad? Like those potatoes need to be prepared no. somehow because if you just get raw potatoes and you shove them in a salad, it ain't gonna be good. It's well, gonna be crunchy and gross. And I was thinking of potato salad when I said like simple preparation. Like they're boiled or something. I don't know. I guess you know? it's lengthy but straightforward, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like you don't have to be, yeah, you can, if you can boil water, you can make a potato salad. You, you also know? have to anticipate no. that you want potato salad in like a few hours. <laughs> okay, so if you can, <laughs> you're right, a potato salad is not what you're going to fling together. I feel like a potato salad though is kind of like a, like a, uh, a secondary salad, right? On the hierarchy of salads, <laughs> there are primary salads. Do you all really not think about your food this way? 
I just <laughs> I don't think about taxonomies of food. Yeah. I Seriously? You want to rank things in a higher <laughs> I know it's not a it's not a ranking at all. There's no high it, it's not a it's not like a greater than less than situation. It's like a relational situation. Yeah. Like, you know, like salads consist of like apparently we've established warm and cold and so you, forkable and cuttable and you know, like bullable. <laughs> But so you think potato is a second tier salad? And here's why. I feel like the potato salad is one of those, it became a regular thing we do um, because um, it probably originally started from someone's like, oh, I've got like some leftovers. Oh, here's some potatoes we didn't finish last night. Heck, let's cut them up and dress them and call it a salad. And people are like, that's so good. It could be a dish in and of itself. Like why wait for the leftovers? And that's where potato salad came from, in my opinion. Right? Like, that seems reasonable. I feel like a lot of food would fit into that category. Absolutely. And what do you call that category? Leftover. Like, I just call it, like, a second <laughs> tier, but that's not, that's not right. But, but it's not a leftover at this so point. Like, like, jambalaya is a like that. Jambalaya is like that, too. Like, we've got a whole bunch of vegetables. I'll just throw them into a pot and cook them all up. And right, but it, it, it exactly. started that way, but now it is a primary dish in and of itself. So it's, like, it's root... It is is uh is as a leftover, but it doesn't necessarily have to contain leftovers. To still so what you're saying is that there's a whole, or potatoes. There's a whole category of food that's basically like based on crap. <laughs> yeah, although I would call it it wouldn't be a taxonomy. This would only be like a simple binary tag, right? Like, did it originate from leftovers or not? At some point, <laughs> historically, isn't, isn't that the responsibility of the person preparing it, not the food? Like, it's inherently. <laughs> well, the no, the. the wasn't destined for anything until the person's like, I don't know, do I want to create an original thing or do I want to use this leftover stuff and make a different thing? It was, I, it happened like this. There was some, there was some lady, <laughs> right, in a German household where they ate like meat and potatoes every day. And she was like looking at the leftover potatoes that her husband didn't eat for whatever reason. This happened obviously in my mind back in like the 30s or 40s, somewhere in Michigan. And you, okay? don't think, you think potato salad was invented in the 1930s? Sure. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. Just trying to follow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In my mind, it was. So she opened the fridge and was like, this is silly. I have like a, a I didn't have Tupperware because it didn't exist in the 30s, probably. I don't know. I have this like tin foil wrapped potatoes and I need to do something with it. But I have no meat left because my husband is slovenly and ate all the whatever meat we had last night, right? <clears throat> So she took these and cut them into quarters and dressed them and made this amazing lunch. It was like, oh my gosh, I have to make this for people to try, which turned into like making extra potatoes until the dish became like, a, came, took on a life of its own. 37 in Kalamazoo. Michigan. <laughs> and that's the history of potato salad. No, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I, I mean, I'm, it's certainly potato salad is old in the 30s but, and it certainly didn't originate Kalamazoo, Michigan, and probably not even the U.S. Um, I love the fact but, that 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 no matter that this is not a tech podcast, but we <laughs> the angle at which we look at everything is very like <laughs> tech based. Like it's a taxonomy of food. <laughs> how many, it's a how binary many screen- tag. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it also helps that like I had I, I went back to work after taking some time off with the baby yesterday, and so I was working like right up until we started today. So like I still have code on my screen. I'm not looking at it because you people are wonderful. It's great to see you. Um, but but there, how many distinct how many distinct like like meal or how many distinct salads can there possibly be? There can only be a many. few hundred. But okay. I mean, or maybe only maybe a few, few thousand. Hundred. Maybe a few thousand. But I mean, at that point, like. There, if you took it the, oh, are you kidding me? The time remaining <laughs> widget popped up. I feel like we've barely scratched the surface on what a salad, what constitutes a salad. We might have to cut this off and make this a two episode podcast. Is that, is that possible? Uh, great topic, great topic. Um, part, part two will be, what's a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> well, no! <I'll... laughs> um, I had so much more to say about salads. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I had no idea I felt so strongly about salads. And maybe you should write a blog post, Gary, about salads. That's not gonna. Ha- we know that's not gonna happen. I can get as far as a blog title. 
<laughs> and probably an outline with at least three to four distinct points. That's a blog post for many people. Yeah, it's true. I know, but I can't, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I have to explore everything thoroughly. I, I feel like if it's less than a thousand words, like, why bother? I, if it's I, less I like than a thousand blog. words, then, then, then that's a perfect blog post. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, that, that's one that people will actually read. People will pull read, yeah, I know. No, as evidenced by the traffic I get on my site with three posts. Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, do we have, now that the timer is on, do we have any uh, questions submitted or should I? I don't think so. I haven't checked, but I'm, we have been, we've been slow in the submitted questions department. Hear that, I, uh Submit your questions. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can submit your questions by adding us on Twitter at, at Binary Jazz or by using the form on binaryjazz.us. Is, um, is that form accessible? Uh, yes. Well, cool. maybe. I don't know. Accessible like accessibility accessible? Uh, yeah. It is Jetpack, uh, so I assume it is accessible. Probably is, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious. Uh, um, no, we do not have any questions. Okay. For this segment, I'm taking us off-roading again. Um, and I'll, we'll post a photo with the show notes of what I'm about to show Gary and Chris. But you're going to guess the functionality of the thing that I'm holding. Are you ready? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> It serves one purpose. It's just one thing. So I'm holding up. It's orange. It, it has like a hook shaped. That is for cutting the straps no, that hold boxes together. Wait, maybe it Seat is. Belts. It's got a. It's got a. Oh, it's a letter opener. No, it's too wide at the end to be a letter opener. It's, uh... <laughs> it's got a magnet on the back. Right, because you put it on your refrigerator so that when the mail comes in, you stick it in and then you open the letters. No, it is for... Surely there, there's enough of a gap at the end of a it letter. It is for shredding lettuce, slowly. <laughs> it is for... <laughs> yeah, extremely slowly. <laughs> like a single leaf at a time, one cut at a time. Have you seen those <laughs> scissors that probably, they probably saw on Sky Mall that have like a bunch of different blades for cutting your lettuce? Like it's... Like... Oh. Teeth. It's. Like, I've always wanted them. I would use them once and probably cut a finger off in into multiple pieces so it can be reattached. Um, Eat in a salad, it's worth it. Yeah, I'm totally having salad for <laughs> lunch. I, I don't know. What is that? What is it for? Is it, it is not a letter opener? It is not a letter opener. Although it, I guess you could maybe try, but I don't think it. Uh, I don't think the groove is enough to actually cut a, an envelope. But you're close in the cutting. It's to, <laughs> you're, it's to cut open bags of milk. Bags of milk. Yep. See, this is a concept that I am unfamiliar with. I know. I know. This is something that would be, like, it's apparently very familiar to any Canadian. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So it serves, so that's, that's its job. <clears throat> Is that is that an item that you would typically see that like companies would give out like as a promotional thing? I don't know, but that would be a great idea for an actual useful swag. But you also have well, to live in a place where they have bagged milk, so I don't know. Sure, but I'm thinking like I, I get um, well, like the the goofy letter opener that has like I don't know like an attorney's business card in it, like you know. That's a thing that gets handed out. That feels to me like a more useful thing and better marketing because bam, it is magnetized right in your fridge and you see that brand all the time. I, I received probably distributes millions of them. One, once, I don't even remember how we got it, um, but you know, Bob's Red Mill, uh, they make various grains. Um, so being gluten-free, we buy lots of various grains. And so their bags are like this big and, and then you open them up and if you don't use all of it, you don't have a place to put it, then you've got an open bag of things. So you have to like, I don't know, get safety or clothes pins or something. So one time I got this thing branded Bob's Red Mill that clips the bag closed. It's amazing. And I wish I had more of them. I don't know. I don't remember how we got it. I mean, other than ordering Bob's Red Mill at some point. Um, yeah, that's similar sort of like very useful random piece of branded swag. I would love to be able to figure out how you get how you figure out what those things are because like you have like you have you like that thing it is the best version of that thing you have and you would spend money on another one of that thing right? possibly yeah 
but so like it should be able like a way to should be a way to buy like a half dozen of that exact thing on Amazon. And I have those things. Like I have like a stupid thing that's a box opener that like retracts the blade, and it's this cheap plasticky thing that looks pretty similar to what Allison's holding up. And I love it. And I've had it. My mother in law got it for me for Christmas. I don't know, like fifteen years ago. And and when I finally break it, I'm going to be sad because I'm gonna have to use like. I don't know, <laughs> whatever people usually use to open boxes. I don't even know. What do you use? Like scissors or something. Also, I have to say, I have not thought more about what I do with closet doors <laughs> ever in my life than I have like this last week, putting kids to bed and then going to bed myself. I even like spent one night like standing at my closet door going, do I, what do I usually do with that thing? <laughs> so that's the kind of lasting impact I want to have on people's lives. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's, it goes with you anywhere you live, you're probably gonna have closets, right? Um, whenever you have this, whenever I have this conversation with people, my friend Allison asked one time, <laughs> what do you do with your closet door? And, and it will always be associated. It was, a, it was a darn good question. In the hierarchy of questions. <laughs> da, da, da. Sorry, are there more questions? I have more questions, but I don't know if we have enough time. to. We have two and a half minutes. We've got plenty of time. Um, how do you measure the productivity of a day? How happy I feel at the end of it. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um, nice. it's, it's subjective based on what I feel I accomplished. Okay. And what's the worst cup of coffee you've ever had? Ooh. Wow. Wow, we do not have enough time for this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I it to be continued. Yeah, worst cup of coffee you've ever had. Um, I have to say that uh, consistently gas station coffee is the worst cup of coffee. <clears throat> I, I've never had gas station coffee because it looks <laughs> like the worst cup of coffee. Yeah. Like why would I do it to myself? For it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if it's like, um, if it's like, you know, 11 o'clock and you're driving home and you need something and the Starbucks is 100 miles away, sometimes you got to make a stop. Yeah, fair. Fair. Um, I, uh, I got this, uh, like, insulated French press, press, French press cup a few years ago for Christmas. Um, and I, the first cup of coffee I made that was pretty terrible because it was too finely ground. So I really didn't have French press coffee. I had coffee grounds that happened to have a metal screen in there for decoration. But I drank it anyway because I don't know why. It, it was, I couldn't figure out a. You know. <laughs> it was cupable. Yeah. And yeah. on that note, we will sign off for the week. Great. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> nice chatting. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.